Hi everyone. In this video, we will be discussing a bit about various regularization techniques which we can use to avoid overfitting in neural networks. These techniques are used in machine learning as well, especially when we talk about linear regression where we use ridge and lasso regularization. Lasso for L1 and ridge for L2. In regularization, we have a loss function and we add one regularization term to it. Let us consider the case of L2 regularization here. Um, so like we have done our discussion in previous cases or in previous videos, LW is the loss function we have and we add a regularization term over here which looks like this. Now here, norm of W2 with L2 uh, and square is going to look like this, W1 square plus W2 square and so on till Wn square. So we assume that there are n weights in the network which we are considering W1, W2 up to Wn. We just take the square of it and uh, we consider a regularization term which is alpha by 2. Now we will make an attempt to see that how inducing this regularization term is affecting the optimal value. So let's suppose that we have attained an optimal value W star. So we will use the same Taylor's theorem um, we had been using in video part 7. And we will assume the same assumption that the loss function is quadratic in a bounded region. And subject to W star, we will be expanding the uh, Taylor's theorem. Um, the only difference is if we consider the function which we had for Taylor's theorem in place of A from part 7 of the video, we are replacing A by W star, X by W and the function F by L. Everything else remains the same. Now here we are going to make a very small uh, change. Uh, we know that uh, gradient of LW is equal to 0 um, and we do this step only for finding the extremum values. Now since an extremum is already attained, like the optimal value is known, we have LW star which should be 0, right? So we do this step, gradient of LW is equal to 0 to obtain this uh, W star. But since W star we have already obtained, we assume that the optimal value is present, the gradient of LW star is going to be 0. So this term completely vanishes out from the expression and what we are left with is this term. Now we do the partial derivative of LW. Um, on doing so, we get this. We get the gradient of LW star and uh, this HW minus W star because uh, we do the derivative in the terms of matrix of this entire term. And if I do gradient of W, W minus W star um, transpose H into W minus W star this comes out to be h of w minus w star much similar to how we do x minus a square um, if we differentiate it with respect to a we get twice of x minus a the same logic will hold and uh, in the same way both the tools will get cancelled and uh, we are going to get a result which looks like this this term again uh, this term again we are going to use the same assumption which we mentioned over here and uh, the eventual gradient of lw comes out to be this so in short, we started with LW and tried to find out the uh, approximation of LW along W star. And we did a bit of gradient as well. And on doing the gradient, we got a value over here, which I am just highlighting it. This is the value which I am getting. Now let's consider the regularization function, which we have just mentioned over here. So if you see the regularization term LRW, is consisting of LW which is the actual loss function plus a regularization constant which is alpha by 2 norm of W2 square. Now if I uh, partially differentiate or find the gradient of this loss function we will first get the gradient of this term which we have just found out over here uh, a step before and on partially differentiating or finding the gradient of this term we are just going to get twice of alpha w vector, right? Which we are mentioning over here. We expand it again and we get the final result as this. This is our final result. So we have gradient of LW expressed in terms of W and W star. This is the derivative we have found out. 
and we separate out the blue star and we separate out the terms which we have already found um, in the terms of the expression and this is the final expression of uh, the regularized learning rate gradient right so for extremum points we equate it to zero like we always do and since it is like a matrix uh, multiplication which is happening over here we just write h plus alpha i um, w is equal to h w star on equating this term to zero we get this and then we uh, pre-multiply with h plus alpha i inverse and then we get the final term so if we are having an optimal uh, value of w which is w star and we are considering and this w star was with respect to the presence of the optimal value in general but we are setting up a regularization parameter um, which is alpha over here and consequently we have a different regularization loss function the change in the value of w with respect to the induction of alpha is going to look like this now in absence of the regularization this alpha is going to be zero so that will mean that um, if we don't use this regularization we are just ending up with h inverse h w star which is nothing but w star but since we have induced this term alpha over here while we were defining a regularization function the actual w star is going to be a bit lesser or actual w is going to be a bit lesser than w star we will show this with a numerical example uh, as we move further but as of now this is the relationship which we have found out once we have an optimal term w star and if i induce a regularization loss function um, what is the change in the value of w which we are getting with respect to the optimal value which we have now we proceed further with considering the l1 regularization we considered l2 before because it was easy to calculate we now proceed with the l1 regularization this was the loss function we had before inducing regularization and this is the regularization term which we have and this will mean that i am just considering mod w1 plus mod w2 or absolute value of wi and so on till mod wn so this is what we are having and now if i do the uh, differentiation of lr the new loss function with regularization term um, we will be differentiating the lw which we have already done and if i kind of differentiate this term um, let's say uh, this is a term which i am trying to differentiate with respect to w1 so what i'm going to get is w1 uh, a 1 if uh, w1 is greater than 0 or minus 1 if w1 is less than 0 and that entire thing is captured over here signum function will say that a uh, positive value needs to be taken if it is greater than or equal to 0 and negative value if it is less than 0 now again like we did previously we equate it to zero and this gradient of lw is something which we have already derived a step before which was over here i think yeah this this is the derivation which i am talking about we are just going to plug the value of a uh, gradient of lw over here and on doing so this is what we are getting and on solving further since we uh, want the weights to be um, the maximum of uh, the term which we are getting over here and zero um, we don't want the weights to be negative that's the main reason we apply uh, an l1 regularization over here this is the updated weights which we are going to get and over here hii is the diagonal value of h the ith diagonal value of h or the hessian is hii which is mentioned over here alpha is the regularization term and w star is the optimal value which we have obtained so we discussed about both l1 and l2 regularization this was the l2 l2 regularization and its impact on uh, the value of w we were able to find out similarly in a very easy way we were able to find out the impact of regularization with respect to l1 regularization on w now we will take a small uh, numerical example to understand how it is working so we consider a loss function over here lw we can see that it is made up of two parameters w1 and w2 so we first differentiate uh, so we need to find the gradient of lw in the first place we differentiate l with respect to w1 
we are getting this so uh, w1 square will be 2 w1 this 6 w1 will give me just 6 and w2 w2 and 13 are independent of w1 all these terms will get vanished and likewise when we are doing gradient of l or del l by del w2 we are going to get twice of w2 minus 4 that's it now over here only we can see the optimal values are 3 and 2 like if we equate the uh, del l by del w1 to 0 del l by del w1 to be equal to 0 we can get w1 to be 3 and w2 like del l by del w2 equal to 0 will give me w2 uh, as 2 so we get the optimal values corresponding to w1 and w2 over here only now let's say that we are inducing the l2 regularization over here but for that we need to calculate the hessian first right so for calculating the hessian we already have the derivative which we have found out we can easily calculate this term uh, double derivative of l with respect to w1 square um, we take this term 2 w1 minus 6 and differentiate with respect to w1 we get 2 um, we take this term del l by del w1 and differentiate with respect to w2 we are going to get 0 over here likewise we are going to get 2 and 0 over here as well so this is the Hessian term we are getting now if we remember the formula carefully so this is how the formula was looking like let me write it down over here for you this this is the formula which we have derived this is the formula which we have derived so we have calculated h and we know the value of, we as of now don't know the value of alpha we will be assuming a value of alpha later on but we can definitely calculate h plus alpha i which is calculated over here and we have calculated h already we know w star uh, because we just found out w star as 3 comma 2 uh, w star is equal to w1 star w2 star which is 3 and 2 and we assume the value of alpha to be 0 0.3 and then we are getting the value of w or this is the regularized value of w as this so the actual value is 3 or 2 so sometimes we and you consider the situation which we are seeing over here so we just had one uh, data to make an estimate of w1 and w2 in real world we may not be having a function which is as easy as the function which we are using over here so we may get predictions which are going to be uh, giving extremely good results on the trained data because it had learned the trained data in such a way that it is able to approximate it with a function in a much better way but it may not be generalizable on the unseen data this is because of the fact that it was le learning the parameters or the weights were learned in such a way that it was trying to reduce the training error to the maximum limit now since it has reduced the training error uh, we don't know whether the real data is going to look exactly like the data on which it was trained it might be possible that training data was just a small subset of the real world approximation which might happen or it may not be resembling well with the uh, data which uh, on which we have to validate so in order to avoid those cases we make sure that the weights are trained in such a way that they generalize well in order to generalize well we induce such regularization terms so over here even though the actual value is 3 and 2 of both w1 and w2 respectively we induced a regularization which gave me lesser values as compared to the actual values under the assumption that it is going to curb the overfitting scenario when we are faced with real data but this was just an equation and just a demo to show how to apply a regularization or l2 regularization parameter when you have uh, an optimized value already um, but the actual implication of it will come once you start working with these regularization values now we consider the same condition and uh, take the l1 regularization l1 regularization was pretty simple if we see over here it was just taking the maximum value uh, minus alpha times hii or zero like it should be either be zero if the, this entire term comes out to be negative or we impute it with the calculation which we are doing over here only when the weights are greater than zero now just see the scenario all the weights which we are getting over here both w1 and w2 they are greater than zero 
right so in the first scenario we are just going to take the value of w1 star which was 3 over here minus alpha times the corresponding value h11 yeah so this is what we did over here so we calculated it it came out to be 2.85 so we had the choice to select the maximum of 2.85 comma 0 2.85 was higher it was selected and then we considered the same w2 for w2 it was w2 star minus alpha times h22 or 0 um, we evaluated this particular term it came out to be 1.85 and the maximum of 1.85 and 0 is 1.85 we stop over there so the actual value of 3 and 2 with regularization was replaced by 2.85 and 1.85 in order to avoid overfitting in real scenario so in this video we considered both l1 and l2 regularization as one of the many other regularization techniques available and we tried to apply the l1 and l2 regularization on a small numerical example whose optimal value was already known and we tried to see how the l1 and l2 regularization changes the weights in order to avoid the overfitting in real sense so in future videos we will delve deep into the other regularization techniques like dropouts um, and batch normalization and in the meantime we will definitely be discussing a lot of other numerical example in higher dimensions as well. Thanks for your time.